people and like that? Um, our defense, transition, and you know, just getting in the gaps, driving and kicking, and our shooters were on today. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to ask you to uh, to grade your defense, but but how did the uh, the bounce feel? Why aren't you going to ask as, that? <laughs> <laughs> Fax it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm sorry. <laughs> But four steals, two blocks. I mean, uh, you know, how did it just feel on that end tonight for you? Um, I felt like I was moving my feet very well. Um, some of those blocks were I was able to get because whether it was Dyson or Herb or Trey, like sliding their feet, forcing the player to alter their shot, I was able to get those blocks. And I feel like collectively as a group, we just played very well on defense. How fun is it for you to, to play with uh, an elite shooter like Trey Murphy? Oh, I love it. Uh, I be looking at Trey all the time in a huddle or when we out on the court, like, I'm going to find you. you. Just know, it may not look like it, but I'm going to find you. Just the the sequence, The I think they cut it to 11 late, and that's when it's block, dunk, steal, dunk. I think you got another steal after the timeout. What did, what did that sequence feel like, and what was kind of just going through your mind in that part? Make a play. Um, got the basket, and then it was kind of sprint back on defense because they were pushing it. And I kind of saw his eyes because we went and double teamed uh, Moji. And I was able to get the steal and make a play. Um, but the thought process was, let's make a play. And I was able to make the play. Willie said that he, he told you in the locker room that you, or he said several times in here, you carried the team tonight. Did you feel anything different with having Brandon and CJ kind of out tonight that you were going to have to do just a little bit more? I mean, when you have two players like that out, uh, you are going to see and feel a difference. Um, but I, I, I give Coach praise all the time on it. At the beginning of the season, beginning of training camp, the conditioning test wasn't nothing physical during training camp. It was just stay ready. If you stay ready, you won't have to get ready. So when your name is called in situations like this, I mean, Trey, Herb, Jose, especially Dyson, they, they've all stepped up. Yeah, actually, this after the San Antonio game a week or two ago, but I feel like it's warranted again tonight. Do you feel like you've started to tap into a different part of your game? You're starting to feel more like the player you used to being when you're on the court now? <clears throat> um, from a ball handling perspective, yes. Um, because like I said, when you have players like CJ and B.I. out, uh, you just you got to pick up where they affect the game. And uh, I just want to thank Coach for trusting me to, to kind of be myself, um, you know, and the rest of the coaching staff and my teammates. If they don't trust me, then it may look a little different for me. And how different does it feel just as far as how quickly you're reading the game compared to the last time you played? Because there are a few times where you were just driving through double teams. You saw the man rotating to the corner. You still made the extra pass. Just how quickly are you processing things now compared to the last time you played? I mean, I tell people all the time. Um, I was trained to be a point guard because, uh, you know, my stepdad told me if you don't grow past uh, a certain height, you're going to have to play point guard. So when I'm making those reads, that's just... That's just been instilled in me. Like, if, like I said, if two people, if three people are trying to close in on me, two people gotta be open somewhere. So when you got shooters like the shooters we have, you just find them. Whether it's a me passing and the person catching and passing again, uh, it's just seeing the game. Hey Zion, it's a game one on one for you, but was this one like the most fun you've had in a game tonight? Just as far as just everything that happened. Um. I'll probably say it's the it's a game where I've expressed it like more um, in a long time, but I'm always having fun when it's just I just express it different games. I express it differently. Like some games I may be having time in my life, I I probably won't smile that much that game. There are other games where I'm smiling a lot because it's just that's what the moment calls for. And sometimes it's just looking at the environment of the team and what needs to be done to get them going. Tonight, 12 free throws, right? So it seems like when you get to the line. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to the line, it seems like you're more aggressive and it opens up everything for everybody else. How, how does it feel when you do get to the line and, and, and can make more plays? I mean, like you said, it opens up the game. Um, 
when those fouls are getting called, now the players that are guarding me now have two fouls, now have three fouls, so they can't be as aggressive. And then there's that moment of hesitation where the help defender either has to come all the way over, go out to my shooter, or even stand still. And in that moment, I make my read. Uh, you had several moments tonight uh, off a rebound, off a turnover, like really pushing the pace, getting downhill. Uh, was that transition play an emphasis for uh, the team as a whole this game, or was it something you decided, like, hey, I'm seeing this opportunity? Um, you know, if you go back to especially my college tapes, uh, even when, I was, when Lonzo was here, I like to get out in transition. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, Coach did make an emphasis that if you get the rebound, just push it. So when I would get the rebounds or one of my teammates would throw it to me, push it. Because when I'm pushing it, force the defense to have to make quick decisions. And I mean, when you see somebody just pushing the ball on a court, your first thought is, let me get back. And you got a shooter like Trey just kind of trailing behind, and you, you just find him. Uh I asked you, uh, I think, a week or two ago about the developing chemistry between you and JV and figuring out the, the space. And uh, there was a lot of really good interior passing going on tonight. Do you feel it's continuing to grow? And, and how is your comfort level with it? Uh, it's definitely growing. Um, I know we still have some things uh, we want to work on, but that's just because we want to get to a point where we feel like it's unstoppable. But uh, like I said in previous interviews, as the season goes on, as, a, uh, as we kind of feel the game out and see each other kind of pick our spots, uh, we're going to learn. You mentioned uh, guys that s stepped up, and you mentioned uh, Dyson specifically. I mean, you were a 19-year-old rookie not that long ago. I mean, how impressive is it to see just how poised he is and just kind of the way he's been able to um, produce, you know, in more minutes lately? <clears throat> um, it's big time. It's big time because I remember when I first came to the league, I would, my friends would be like, man, what is it like? What is it like? And it's like, this isn't high school. This isn't college. Like, you know, Tyson's 19. You may have somebody else on the opposing team, 28 or 30, like two, three kids. They have a family. And this is our job. Like, yeah, we love basketball, but at the end of the day, like, it's how everybody feeds their family. So when you get thrown out there, this isn't, it's not always like kicks and giggles. This is, it's real life. Uh, so to see Dyson getting out there and stepping up like that and to be 19, I mean, as you watch, it's unfolding in front of our eyes. He's just getting better game by game. I just wanted to ask you again about the, the back tattoo and just the, the, the meaning <laughs> behind it and um, just, you know, what made you get it and just the, the meaning behind it. Uh, so yeah, for, I guess for the people that don't know, um, I have a tattoo across the top of my back that says um, Mount Zion, and it's like Mount, it went to T, it's like a big cross that goes kind of from the top of my neck down to like my lower spine, you know, I'm in Zion on the other, other side, and that tattoo just, it took me a long time to kind of get that tattoo because I wanted to make sure that I wanted it because once it's there, it's, it's there forever. Like, even if you get lasers, I mean, you still kind of see it. So I wanted to make sure. I prayed over it, talked to my mother about it, and she asked the same thing you asked, like, why, why do I want it and why what is it going to mean to me? And for me, you know, from the moment I got it, <clears throat> I felt like it was a kind of like an added aura to myself. Like, just if somebody's watching me from the back, then they they can still feel it. I feel like it's like an invisible force there for me. And what it means, I mean, my grandmother that passed away when I was one, so I never really got a chance to talk with her or interact. Um, she helped my mom come up with my name, so it's a biblical reference as well. So, I mean, it holds a lot of, you know, special meaning to me. Um, I mean, eight hours. It took eight hours. <laughs> but, uh, I mean. Was it one session? Or? Oh, yeah. I, no, I, I was not about to do that in two sessions. <laughs> uh, so, but, yeah, uh, I'll probably go on Instagram or Twitter and <clears throat> um, give the tattoo artist um, his respect because, I mean, that was a part of the journey as well. 
I'm sorry, Matt, if I'm gone, but uh, <laughs> it's part of the journey as well. When I was talking to the artist about it, you know, he he understood where I was coming from. Um, he was a hooper as well, so I had loved that. Um, and he understood the spiritual aspect that I was that I wanted and why I wanted the tattoo. So, I mean, everybody just. The artists, myself, my mom, my grandmother, and friends and family, they, I mean, that's what this tattoo is for. And just a big picture question for the season. You guys are now five games over 500. First time this franchise has done that since 2017, 18. Been a long time. And, and you guys all talked about having expectations coming into this year. And you, despite that, you really haven't had the team that you thought you were going to have, right, because all of the injuries. So just what does it say about this team that y'all are at this point, despite everything y'all have dealt with you know, throughout the season? Um, I've said it in previous interviews. We got a lot of depth on this team. We are a special team. And I think as the season goes on, I mean, the world will get to see that because we'll learn each other and we'll figure it out. Hey, Zion, the other day we asked you to sort of reflect on your first 100 games. What are your goals for this second 100 game? I mean, stay healthy. I mean, when I'm not able to play the game I love, that itself is sickening. This is what I love to do. I love playing the game of basketball. I love coming in this arena, seeing kids look up to me and thinking, man, I used to be that kid looking up to other players. Uh, the fans showing a lot of love. My teammates just living my dream. So when I'm injured, I can't do that. So I guess that's the main thing for me, just stay healthy. Awesome. Thanks, e. Thank you. you guys have a great night.